two, and I'll give you two of them away. I'll give two away tonight. Um, so we have seen a lot of increase in app rolls and vendors and the things that have been going on with the BlackBerry, uh, with the BlackBerry ecosystem. In fact, we currently have over 90,000 apps available in the BlackBerry app world, which is about 220% increase over last year. We just made the 3 billion downloads, so uh, that's over 175 million downloads per month. Oh look, and I have a pretty graph here for those of you who are into graphs, you know, again, a lot of marketing hype. But the important thing to understand is that, is that BlackBerry is not a dead platform. We have our struggles here in the, in the uh, particularly the United States. But uh, I've got a friend who's doing a show, the BB Jam in Canada. We just sold out two venues in under four hours. I've got friends who are running things in Latin America. They bring 2,000 developers to events every week. So BlackBerry is huge. We're the number one smartphone and tablet basically outside the United States. Unfortunately, we all live in the United States. So that's what we see. So a little more marketing fluff. We're committed to BlackBerry 10. We're basically betting the farm on BlackBerry 10. In fact, we're so committed that we have seeded over 20,000 playbooks into the marketplace to get people to develop for BlackBerry 10. Now, the playbook is not running BlackBerry 10, but the core kernel of the playbook is run on what's called QNX. I don't know how many of you have heard of QNX. Anybody heard of QNX? Okay. A couple nuclear reactor people here, automobile people. Yeah. About 60% of the automobiles in the world, their navigation systems, their computer systems, run on QNX. Several of the major uh, nuclear power plants, not the ones over in Japan, run on QNX. We even have an arm of the International Space Shuttle, that is, or the space station, that's run by QNX. It's been around for about 30 years. It's a true, real-time, multitasking operating system. And that's the basis of the playbook, and that's the basis of BB-10. So it's a very strong system. Unfortunately, we see the 20,000, oh, 20,002 okay. playbooks after the launch of the playbook. And what we heard from the developers were, why did you give them to them after you launched? If you want applications on your system, you should give them to us before launch. Because, as we all know as developers, email leaders do you no favors, right? I mean, they can see whether you're lined up okay, but if you really want to test, you got to put it on the device, right? So that's where we came out with the BlackBerry Dev Alpha. The Dev Alpha device is not a working BlackBerry 10 device, as in foam. It's not a final form factor, but the guts are about the same as what we would have with a BlackBerry device. So we gave out 5,000 leads to our developers during the BlackBerry Jam World Tour. We went to 26 different cities around the country. I told you my buddies in Waterloo, that's the one going on now. So we gave those out, and we'll be giving more out at the BlackBerry Jams America at the end of September. I'll tell you more about that. But basically, we're committed to making sure that you've got devices to be able to test on. Because there's nothing like testing on an actual BlackBerry device. Um, more quotes. RIM's best weapon is their forum developers. How long have I been here? Well, here I've only been here a couple hours. But I've been at RIM since May, right? I'm part of the new breed. Alex Saunders, my boss and boss, Bob Taniguchi, myself, we're all ex-Microsoft. What do we do at Microsoft? We were evangelists. They brought us into RIM to start developer relations and start evangelism. This is what we do. We come out and we talk to you people. The first slide here, the last slide you'll see, the first slide of the next presentation, the last slide, got my Twitter handle on it, got my email on it. Send me an email, tweet me, whatever. Let's talk, let's get together. We're about reaching out to the community. We're embracing the open source community. We have people sitting on, um, on the jQuery mobile, Jason Scott, he's a contributor on jQuery mobile. We've got people sitting on the Cordova crew. You'll see later today we'll talk about BBUS, BBUIJS, oh, we'll get that right. which is a way to get the UI onto WebWorks, open source. Our emulator, open source. RIM is really a new RIM. We have an entire new C-suite, new CEO, new COO, new CMO, and a new chief legal officer. I mean, no legal problems, but we've got a new one of that either. So really, we're kind of like a start. We're hanging out, we're ready to launch this. Oh, except we have zero debt and $2 billion in the bank. So RIM's not going anywhere. We're building BB10, and we're also making sure that it's a solid, strong platform. We're gonna be launching in the end of the month something we call the, uh, 
the Democrat Navy, yeah. We're thinking maybe built for BlackBerry. Basically, it's going to be some kind of program that allows us to verify your applications. We don't want the problems of other systems where every other app is, is malware or where every other app makes rude noises or something, right? BlackBerry people are about getting things done. We want applications in our store that get things done. So we'll be launching that at the end of the month. We also believe in this platform. Like I said, I came out of retirement to do this. There's a lot of cool things that we've got going on. And the other thing is there's a lot of cool things for you developers, things like that rectangular paper the government prints, right? Bunny. Independent surveys, Evans Data Corp, September 2011. This is a little old report, but it says 13% of BlackBerry developers make over $100,000 from their BlackBerry apps. Think about that, 13%. That seems like 13%, uh, you know. But I dare you to compare that against <coughs> Apple or Android. Developers get rewarded by making good apps. 20% of developers who receive apps with at least 100 downloads see sales over $100,000. Now people may think, well, that's kind of weird. Why is that? Well, remember, BlackBerry people are different people. A person who has a BlackBerry, who will have a BlackBerry pin, is not a 12-year-old kid going to school. They're professionals who want to get things done. And they realize that a 99-cent app isn't a bargain. So they're willing to pay more for their applications provided their applications provide them with productivity. BlackBerry apps generate on average $3,853 a month in revenue, which is more than Apple, a little bit more than Apple, and quite a bit more than Android apps. So there's money to be made here. That's the bottom line, right? That's the bottom line. There's money to be made here. Not only that, but we're guaranteeing there's money to be made. At BlackBerry 10 Jam, we talked about the $10,000 app guarantee. We're putting our money where our mouth is. Basically, it goes like this. You write an app for BB10, not BlackBerry, for BB10, BlackBerry 10. You run it through our certification program. It gets certified. It goes into our store and is available for purchase at the launch of BlackBerry 10, which isn't a problem because all our SDKs are already out there and ready for you to start working. You then market that app like you would normally. If you make at least $1,000 on that application, at least $1,000, we bet you'll make $10,000. In fact, if you don't make $10,000 in the first year, we'll make up the difference. So if you've got an app that goes out in the App Store and you are promoting it, you tweet it to your friends, it's out there for the, in the whole year in the App Store and you make only $2,000 on it, at the end of the first year, we'll cut you a check for $8,000. Here you go. Because we are so confident that you're going to make money on our platform. So we're putting our money where our mouth is. That is, you know, if you're into money. So we've got a lot of apps in our platform. <coughs> um, a lot of apps that people don't know because not a lot of people are out there right now. Probably. How many anybody here have a BlackBerry? I've mean, got like three. Yay. Yeah. So we've got our usual apps out there. We've got Angry Birds and we've got Foursquare and LinkedIn and all that kind of stuff. So we do have the applications out there. But again, this is what the DDR is set. We're doing BlackBerry 10. So let me show you a little bit about BlackBerry 10 as soon as these come in. Oh, I forgot to tell you, by the way, you're all my guinea pigs tonight. I'm actually running this presentation off of SkyDrive. SkyDrive just launched a, a hookup for uh, uh, Office 365. I know, my heart always goes back to Microsoft. Um, so this presentation is actually running live and direct. So if it's a little slow, it's Internet's fault. Okay, so um, let me show you what BlackBerry 10 looks like. These are some videos from uh, from the BlackBerry Jam we did in May when we took it around the world. Just to give you a little glimpse of what BlackBerry 10 is all about. Hopefully. What is that beeping noise? Did anybody hear that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. Not me. Huh. Oh well. Maybe. So the flow is really taken to a new level on BlackBerry 10. We looked at things like notifications and we just recognized that it's not just about being notified about a conversation. It's really being immersed into it instantly. 
And so what we've designed is this really clever, intuitive, glancing gesture. Now, let me just show you this. As I open an application, not only can I drive back down, but I'm able to glance into a notification. I can see I've got unread emails, unread BBMs, but more importantly, as I continue this glancing gesture, I bring right into my conversations. And this is absolutely bringing me into and flowing into that actual conversation. And you know what? I get to decide whether I act on it instantly or simply get back to what I was doing. Once you're in your conversations, we keep that flow going. So we've got to make sure that flow is there. You're always going to want to glance right back to exactly what you were doing. So I go into a new message, and I simply glance back to the conversation. That I love that. I love that. That is so cool. But you know what? Everything really does flow. We never yep. stop. So you open a photo, you open a PDF, uh -huh. it doesn't matter. Everything flows, it never stops. Look at it. So how are we able to do that? Because we're built on the QNX kernel. True, real-time multitasking. Those other applications don't stop when they're in the background. So the peak gesture is simply a gesture that allows you to pull away whatever application you're looking at and look at the applications that you left running behind. We like to call it stroke, not hook. It's all about using gestures that are appropriate and will do things for you on your device. Let me show you our new keyboard. Um, Blackboard, Blackberry is famous for its keyboard. So let me show you what we're doing for Blackberry 10. Or all that. I think Vivek's doing this one too. I think he does all of them. <coughs> See, that's nice. It's kind of a spinning little orb. Let's, uh, I can't wait to that one up. let's look at the, let's see if we can get the camera in here. Or if we just get two spinning things. Alright, so let's do this. Let's, uh, let's pop into the browser. Just talk about the keyboard. Hmm. All right. I have some slides. We'll talk about them too. Is there a way to close this app out and reboot it? Yeah, it's just the it's just their PowerPoint viewer. We'll just move on. There we go. So. Moving on, um, that was uh, Vivek, one of our lead designers, and Thorsen, the new CEO. Um, Thorsen was the guy with the, uh, he's German, so he's, uh, I just got emailed, sorry. Um, so, so Blackbird then thinks and adapts to the world around you, keep evolving, it's nice marketing. What does that mean? Well, it means a couple of things. We talked about the peak gesture. You saw the peak gesture. What that allows you to do is stay focused on communication. So if something happens, like an email pops up on your, on your playbook, you can simply push the app aside. 
You don't have to close the app, you don't have to shut it down, you don't have to pop it, you can push it aside, and you can see little information, we call it context in. Was it an email? Was it a BBM? Was it a text? Who knows what came in? Oh, I can see it was an email. Let me push over a little bit more, I can see who that email's from. Uh, from my boss, I'm gonna read it, and I keep going. I get to decide as the user when I look at the information that pops up. That's what we call the peak gesture. All the applications be able to use the peak gesture through something called an invocation framework. And also thanks. Now here's the keyboard that we have come up, and unfortunately the video didn't work, but they're all out on YouTube. Um, the cool thing about the keyboard is we did a couple of things. One is we did predictive text. No doubt, right? Everybody does predictive text. But we don't just do predictive text based on the dictionary. We do predictive text based on your emails, your BBMs, and your documents. So we learn how you speak in text. So when we type along, what word comes up for me when I hit a W may be different than what comes up for you when you hit a W, or will you when you hit a W, based on your speech patterns. And then, those words don't appear at the top of the keyboard, they appear over the next letter. So the what is over the W, the how is over the H, because that's where your thumb is going when you're going to type. And instead of having to move your thumb somewhere else, you just flick with your thumb and that word goes into your message. So we not only learn your patterns and base our predictive text on your patterns, we also put the word where your thumb is going to be. We also learn where you type. How many of you are always hitting the R instead of the E or the T instead of the Y and you're always backing up? We're going to learn that. And as we learn that, we're going to move the hotspots from those characters to where you normally type. So you're going to get more accurate with typing on this keyboard without having to do anything. It's just going to magically happen. Because we're going to learn your style of typing. And as we learn your style of typing, we're going to adjust the keyboard accordingly. It also remembers, and I'm really sorry we didn't get this video to run, but Time Warp is an incredibly cool thing. Basically what it is, is it's a camera application, but when you snap a picture, it takes a little tiny video. And then what you can do is you can back up parts of that picture. I know you've seen all the recent commercials where they, they do the one with the goat. You've seen the one with the goat where it kicks off the bag. They're like, okay, well, we just back up each frame, and then whatever frame we like, we're ready to go. We don't do it by frame. We do it by section. These red squares around the faces, we were able to change her face to one that we like without changing the rest of the picture. So you don't have to keep going back, well, well that frame was okay for her, but not for him. And we we'll go back one more frame, oh, well, that was good for him, but not for her. You may never get that. But to get that absolute perfect shot. So this is just a few of the glimpses that we're doing into BlackBerry 10. But the real neat thing for BlackBerry 10 that we're doing is we're not based on Java anymore. For this device, if you wanted to write for this device, you wrote in Java, that was it, you created a code file, out it goes. We're now embracing the open source movement. We're looking at the industry. The industry's not writing about Java anymore. What are they writing? They're writing HTML5, C++. They got some Java in the, in the, Ando, in the Android runtime. But you can take any of these roads to get to BlackBerry 10. And if you have an Android app, the Android developers out here, we have an Android runtime. So you can go home tomorrow morning pop up to our website, drop your APK file into our, into our checker, and if it comes through and says you're good to go, you recompile that, put it up in the store, and it's ready to go. If you want to run on the Android runtime. So, I'm going to focus today over here on the HTML5 BlackBerry WebWorks. What I'm going to do over the next few minutes is just give you kind of an introduction to why we did WebWorks and what it can do for you, and then we'll do a little more intense stuff. Um, I've got a computer up here, we might look at some code, show you how easy it is to get up and run. How, just out of curiosity, how many of you have a web app right now? An HTML5 web app that's out there running? All right. You guys can do the same thing as the Android guys. Go home tomorrow morning because it's going to be late tonight. You can download WebWorks. You can package your application up and you can get in the BlackBerry store right away. Very little code change. I say very little because depending on how you did your, uh, um, your screen real estate management, you may have to tweak it based on a little bit of devices. But if you're smart, if you did it all with relatives and things like that, you're good to go. You can get it up and run. So this is our foundation. Like I said, down here we've got the QNX kernel. Down here, a few people over here in this room. Don't want to show favorites. Um, the QNX kernel, 30 years in development, real-time multitasking kernel. It's really 
what we're betting BlackBerry 10 on. It's the future of BlackBerry 10. Above it, we built the platform APIs, all the things you would expect, network, storage, audio, video, etc. But then the key is that we have embraced the WebKit, JavaScript, and HTML5 just as much as we have C++, Cascades, and QML. Cascades is basically our UI framework for C++. So HTML5 on our system is not a second-class citizen. In fact, we have lots of arguments, uh, discussions with the native guys about, hey, we built this application. It runs just as well as your application. And we run in HTML5. It didn't take us as long to do it. We had the code already there. So whatever road you want, that's the road you get to take to BlackBerry 10. Uh, the BlackBerry web platform is also driven by standards. The RIM tablet right here, when this was done, we were currently in first place if you go to HTML5Test.com. Um, with a score of 373, um, we are powered by the WebKit engine, so we are really into focusing on those standards. So if you've got standard HTML5 and JavaScript, that's for us. We're also open, so we use the platform too. If you want to use jQuery, like I said, we've got guys sitting on the jQuery. Jason Scott sits on the jQuery. He's a contributor. Um, PhoneGap, Sentia, Dojo, Alice, any of those web frameworks, those, those JavaScript frameworks, you're ready to go. Um, let's see, I guess I'm gonna say that. Ooh, no, I'm losing. Um, okay, so I said we had 737. Um, we did the BB10 browser, the BlackBerry 10 browser, and it scored a 447. So the BlackBerry 10 browser, built from the ground up for BlackBerry 10, has even greater support for HTML5. We're very committed to this HTML5 platform. <coughs> Um, this is a good slide. I probably don't have to tell you guys this because you guys are a lot of your HTML5 platforms. But um, a lot of people think of HTML as like the early days in the web. You know, what can you do with it? Well, ooh, we can make a table. Nice. Ooh, you know. Um, but with HTML5 now, I mean, holy cow. I mean, there's very little you can't do with it. It's got geolocation built in. Now, granted, on a browser, it does kind of odd geolocation. But when you get HTML5 and web works, you can pull the GPS off the device. We can use web sockets. We have offline storage, so we follow the, the guidelines for the offline storage, whether you want to use SQLite, um, audio visual, we have notification handlers so you can do notification. Basically, we allow you to do whatever you want with the system, and WebWorks allows you to get access to the device from the HTML5 code and the JavaScript code. BlackBerry WebWorks is a cross-platform HTML5 application framework for creating standalone BlackBerry applications. Now, those of you who are still paying attention, you notice that phone on the left is not a BlackBerry 10 device. WebWorks is available for this device as well. So even though I was saying, you know, you need Java, you know, that's that kind of stuff, we built WebWorks so that you can actually build BBOS 7 devices as well, which is what my goal is. So if you want to build a device for BBO7, you build an HTML5, you compile it with the WebWorks for BBO7, it goes out to BBO7. Then you go through and you package it up with WebWorks for BB10, it goes out in the, the BB10 app store, which is available now, by the way, for the, anyone with beta devices, or for the playbook. One code base, repackaged. Now there's some tweaks there, you know, there's no such thing as cross, you know, cross application code, but there's some tweaks there as far as the applications go for the for the uh, screen resolutions and things like that, but the, the underlying code is all the same. So, oh, somebody else got me on. Um, the WebWorks platform allows you to get access to the same developer APIs as we see with, with uh, C++. I'm repeating myself now. So how do you get there? Those of you with applications right now, web-based applications, HTML5, JavaScript, I, I challenge you, do this tomorrow morning, or do it tonight when you get home. All you need to do is take your assets, take your web assets, download the WebWorks tools off our site, so I'll show you how to do that. Package them up, run them through the packager, a couple of little command lines, or if you've written them, <coughs> click a button, and voila, you'll have a bar file, that's our, our package, and you can throw it out in the store. If you do it with WebWorks SDK, it'll work on a playbook. If you do it with the BlackBerry 10 SDK, it'll go on the dev alpha device. And that's all you have to do. If you've got an application now, you can do this in probably an hour and a half. You have an application in the web store. So we are committed to open standards. You'll also find, and I'll give you links, 
when we get to the end, we've got a huge repository on GitHub. I can't remember what the count was, 250 some odd projects out on GitHub. Almost everything we do, BBUI, JS, Alice, JS, um, any of the samples that you see here, uh, our Ripple emulator, are out on GitHub, and they're all open source. So if any of you want to contribute, we would love to have you also go out there and contribute. Um, PhoneGap, jQuery, Alice, all those JavaScript libraries just work because we're supporting the web. We're embracing what's going on with the web. And as long as the web standards are moving forward, that's where we're going. Um, BBUI JS, I mentioned that a couple of times and we'll look at it in detail in a couple of minutes, or probably 10 minutes. Um, it's basically our UI framework for HTML5. I talked about Cascades. Cascades allows you to do some of those cool things that we saw in the, almost saw in the videos. Um, the UI stylings, the, the, the drop down list boxes, the glancing, those types of things. That's Cascades for C++. Basically BBUI JS is the same thing for WebWorks. So that you can get the same look and the same feel. Applications that are written for WebWorks using BBUI JS look exactly the same as applications written for C++ and Cascades. <coughs> Okay, so how do you develop for BB10, for BlackBerry 10? Well, what I tell people right now, and one of the reasons why I brought two playbooks with me today, is the playbook is the on-ramp for BlackBerry 10. They're both QNX based currents. This is not. If you write an application for the playbook, it will run on BB10. Now you may have to tweak some of the UI because it's a little different layout, but we have people, um, who is it? The Galaxy on Fire. They ported their playbook app to a BB10 Dev Alpha device in an afternoon. High intense graphics. I don't know if you ever played Galaxy on Fire, but usually the Galaxy's on Fire. You save it. Um, they ported it in an afternoon when they got their BB10 Alpha. Because it's the same kernel, because we're using the same signatures, the applications just move across. So if you want to get into BlackBerry 10 development, you can download the BlackBerry 10 tools and download the WebWorks tools as well, because you can get your application out there into, into uh, the app world. And I keep saying that, and the reason why I'm saying that is because, you know, put your toe in the water. If you've, got, if you've already got an Android app, or if you've already got <coughs> a, a web application, it takes you a couple of hours to put it into a BB playbook <coughs> application and put it out there, right? Why not? Test the waters. Um, so here's some of the key developer sites, uh, developer.blackberry.com, devblog.blackberry.com, and blackberry.github.com. You'll find all the information you need on any of those uh, sites. The dev blog, of course, is people like me write blogs about where we're going, what we're doing, the announcements. Uh, developers, our main site, uh, we actually just posted today, um, speaking of the development community, we just posted today something we call um, the uh, arrival boards. They look like um, airplane arrival boards, and it's about all the features that are upcoming and when they're going to ship. So we want to make sure that people know when things are going on. Um, okay, I think that's the end of the marketing plot. Let's see. Oh, I got, I got to push back right here. Um, I told you that we're trying to cram three days of material into, into, into two hours tonight. If you want the three days of material, Here's where you get it. Blackberry Jams America will be September 25th through 27th in San Jose, California. Um, we will be giving away Dev Alpha devices there to qualified developers. So if you register, you basically pop online and say, here's what I do, here's what I develop, here's what I'm thinking about building. And when you get there, you'll get a Blackberry 10 Dev Alpha device. Actually, they might be the beta devices by now. Um, you can register at blackberryjamconference.com and get more information out there. And if you're really serious about um, going, come see me. I've got 10 free passes for anybody who wants to go, which is, I think they're running 599 um, for the conference. I've got 10 free pass codes if anybody wants them. Why not just sell the dev Um Honestly, because we can't produce enough to do that. Um, in order to build the dev alpha devices, we had to take our, basically our develop, our lines <coughs> So we shut down the building of all our other phones, which we still tell, sell a ton of phones. So we shut them down to be able to build the Dev Alpha devices. So it's very costly for us to produce the Dev Alpha devices. So we do them at very um, small bunches. So we're creating more for um, BlackBerry Jam America. And also, 
We want to drive people to the conferences. We think that's where you're going to learn a lot of the good information. Um, there's a, every track at Blackbird Game America, and there's this track, the HTML5 track, there's C++, there's Cascades. Um, there's even, let's see, we're in America? Yeah. Um, there's even the Enterprise track, because we don't have Enterprise tracks um, over there. Uh, OK, so that's the end of the marketing thing. Um, I was going to say take a quick break, but you guys are kind of breaking on your own, or do you want to take five minutes while I change machines? We're well, going to have to anyways, because I'm going to change machines. Um, I'm going to do a quick introduction to Ripple and maybe UIJS, but uh, my code is running on my laptop, so. For the registration, you know, you got to take care of it. The registration and the
extensions and WebWork SDK for BB10. And they're in purple because that's how I'm going to tell you how to get there. So, if you wanted to get there, let's start with Ripple. 
Um, this is your big page, developer.blackberry.com, HTML5. We've got developer.blackberry.com slash native, developer, all right? And you might be in UK. Um, but basically, you go to developer.blackberry.com and there's a confusing five buttons that says, oh, what do you want? Click the one that says HTML, and that'll bring you here. This is the home page for the HTML. We call this a microsite. Each of the platforms has its own microsite. That getting started button will take you through a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about today, um, as well as some sample applications, but you won't be able to see some of the cool code I'm going to show. So, let's emulate. We're going to start out with Ripple. Ripple is a multi-platform mobile emulator. It's an open source project. It's out there in GitHub if you want to contribute. We would love to have people contribute. Basically, it renders the web content like it does in the web browser, it works through the web kit, but it also emulates the de device-specific API capabilities in WebWorks. So you can get access to some of the information um, for the device through the emulator as well. It also allows web inspecting and debugging. I'm not going to go through that today. But basically, understand that you can, you can turn on what we call the, the web inspector, you can send your application to a physical device like a playbook and have it send information back and debug it through Ripple. Um, it is also where you will package and sign your BlackBerry applications. You will need signing keys if you want to put them out into, uh, uh, into the app world. Um, signing applications, just like everything else. You make a request, they send you back a couple of keys, you run a program that develops the keys, then you're ready to go. It takes about a half hour, 45 minutes to get keys back from, uh, from BlackBerry. Might be a good thing to do when you you know when you go home. Just pop out there, sign up for an account, get yourself some keys, get ready to go. So, Ripple is really easy to install. All you need to do is download the extension out on developer.blackberry.com HTML5. You click on the little button that says Tools, and then you'll see one that says Ripple. That'll download the Ripple underscore UI CRX file. It's usually put in the program files, research in motion, Ripple, and then version number. Um, if you're on 64-bit uh, Windows, it'll be program files, x86, all that kind of good stuff. Um, then you just need to launch the Chrome browser and navigate to Chrome colon slash slash Chrome slash extensions. And that's going to bring up basically the place where you put in your Chrome extensions. I don't have any Chrome extensions right now, so it looks like this. And then all you do is you go to where you drop that, that uh, CRX file, click, drag, drop. You drop it right into this window, it'll pop up this little thing and say, hey, you want to add the Ripple emulator? And you say, yes, I do. Actually, it says add. And then it'll pop up and it'll say, Ripple emulator has been added to Chrome. And what you'll notice is up in your, up in your status bar in the top of Chrome, over on the right, you'll see a tiny little icon that looks like this. Or looks like this. Oh, I can't do that. And then you're ready to go. Ripple is now installed. So what you would do is you would load an application, like in this case, you might want to load the devblog.blackberry.com into Chrome. Then you would go up and you click that little extension, you see that little icon up in the address bar, and you click the little button that says enable. And all of a sudden, what will happen is your application is now running inside Ripple. Now this is a pretty cool screenshot, but let's look at it live. So I've got a little application I've been working on. It's a really intense application. It's going to change the entire world. It's called Zen Lottery. It's, uh, it's a lottery application that uses your, uh, the Zen of your location to pick your numbers. Um, I wrote it because I wanted to use the GPS stuff and I wanted to know the location thing. So it actually uses the location, takes your latitude and longitude and munges it into a key and then builds random numbers off of it. It's kind of fun. Um, so if I load Zen Lottery, this is what it looks like running in Ripple. Now, I've got a bunch of slides that you're going to see me skip through that are basically going to show you what I'm going to show you now. The slides are dull. This is much more fun. This is a real live running application. It is running in Ripple. You see all the nice stuff over on, over on the sides. It's also running in a BlackBerry Playbook emulator. What if I wanted to do it in a BB10? Well, I'm going to pop over here to where it says Devices, or Platforms. I'm going to click the Platform button. And I'm going to change where it says WebWorks. You see over there on the left? I'm going to change it to BlackBerry 10 WebWorks. Click Change the Platform. It's going to reload, and now it's going to be emulating the BlackBerry 10 simulation. So now I've got a BlackBerry 10 device. Maybe I don't want to do BlackBerry 10. 
Maybe I want to work with, oh, I don't know, PhoneGap? Let's try PhoneGap. Change it over to PhoneGap. PhoneGap is going to put it into a BBO7 device. Or if I want to change devices, I got a whole bunch of devices I can emulate. So the nice thing about Ripple is it's not only about emulating for BlackBerry 10 to the playbook, but anything that we're going to develop on BlackBerry or part of the open source community. Because clearly PhoneGap is not a BlackBerry product. But we support and we embrace that. So notice we've got phones up here like the HTC Legend, um, generic phones, other things to emulate. So Ripple's kind of a really cool thing for doing HTML5 development on, on uh, platform. So let's go back to my favorite, the WebWork tab. So I can do other cool things. Oops, you know, my app actually looks better when it's in portrait mode. So I click that and it pops up into portrait mode. Just like that. My application, um, I told you, also uses uh, the GPS to be able to pick up the numbers. So if we go ahead and pick some Powerball numbers here, notice the first numbers here are 8, 27, 33, and 37. If I click that again, well, they're the same numbers. I didn't move anywhere. But I don't have to pick up my laptop and move away. I can come over here to the right, where it says geolocation, and I can move my geolocation. So right now, this is going to think I'm in um, <clears throat> downtown Waterloo, Canada, because Brenda's how is in downtown Waterloo, Canada. But all I have to do to move it around is just click and drag and I move it over here. Notice those numbers, latitude and longitude up there. They're moving as I go, right? And I move it over here. Let's do it to, uh, oh, there we go. We'll move it to there. Now if I click the Powerball numbers, the numbers change because my GPS location changed. So I can emulate the GPS with this as well. I can emulate a lot of the hardware. Oh, wait. My application <coughs> doesn't do this, but I can. So rim IO, run away. <laughs> Classic. Okay, that's going to load up into an application I don't want it to load up into. Let's see, so we'll take it out of Internet Explorer and let's put her into Chrome. <coughs> yeah, so there it is, running in Chrome in the Ripple emulator. See the little green dot in the middle? I'm going to go ahead and play around with the accelerometer and watch how I can make that little green dot move around. Whoa, move to the left, move up. Whoa. That's all this does. <laughs> Not very exciting, but what is exciting is that you can use the emulator to be able to emulate the accelerometer so you can see how your application is going to react. And Oh, the accelerometer, GPS location, so you can change the GPS location. One thing I didn't show you is these things are also editable too. So if you just wanted to go up there, if you had certain um, coordinates you wanted to try out, you can just type the coordinates in there and they'll pop up for you. Um, we also have accuracy, and this is my favorite, although it's kind of a bad thing to show, but we also have the GPS delay, because as we all know, if you've worked with geolocation, it's not always instantaneous. So you can actually set it and say, okay, I'm going to let it wait for three seconds, five seconds, so that my application can emulate that type of a delay with the GPS. Because some devices are slower than others. Okay, so now that we've got Ripple down, we know we've got the emulator, how do we build all these cool stuff? How do we transform our HTML5 BlackBerry application into a WebWorks application? Well, it's all about packaging. The WebWorks allows you to package your HTML5 and JavaScript assets into a BlackBerry application. All the only difference is which WebWorks you download. When you go out to the WebWorks download page, you'll see one for Tablet OS, you'll see one for BlackBerry 10, which is what I suggest you start with because the BlackBerry 10 devices are the cool devices. Um, and that's what you need, one of the WebWorks SDKs. I would suggest you BlackBerry 10 or the uh, Tablet OS. Um, we also have a simulator if you want to work in a simulator. Um, simulators are great. They, they usually have a little higher um, uh, support for some of the underlying APIs, but they're also slow. With Ripple, I can make a code change, pop over, refresh the page, and that code change is there. With a simulator, I got to make a code change, I got to package it up, and I got to deploy it to the simulator. So, Simulators have their place, you know, when you're getting down to the nitty gritty, you want to be able to see it. But personally, as a web developer, I like the instantaneous feedback I get from, from uh, 
Ripple. So pop out to developer.blackberry.com slash HTML5 slash download slash SDK or blackberry.com and click the buttons. And that's where you can get the SDK. The one at the top, um, Blackberry 10 WebWorks SDK, that's the one for building Blackberry 10 applications. And again, although Blackberry 10 will not ship to the public until the first quarter of next year, we already are accepting applications for Blackberry 10. So a lot of the developers that have dead alpha devices are submitting applications for BlackBerry 10. They go on a special beta version of, of the app world, which is only accessible from dead alpha devices. Basically, again, it's getting darker, I'm gonna lose it here. Basically, again, it's down to the point where we're embracing the community. We're saying, hey, what's the fun of saying you built this great app for BlackBerry 10 and nobody gets to see it until the device is shit? How about sharing with the community, showing what you can do? Put it out there for the beta, let the community play around with it, give you feedback, so basically you get your own built-in beta cycle. Because after all, the community of BlackBerry Dev Alpha developers want you to look at their application as much as you want them to look at your application. You get a chance to get it nice and solid, and when we ship BlackBerry 10, you're gonna make that $10,000 in the first year, no problem. So, then you run the installation, here's the exciting installation, and you know, it's a standard installation, goes through, asks for the install folders, etc. And then you're ready to go. We saw this slide in the previous one, but this is all you need to do. Take your HTML5 web assets, your JavaScript files, your music, your videos, whatever, and you just run them through the WebWorks tool package. And out comes a Blackberry application. And you're ready to go. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. No more messing around with Java. Unless you have an Android app, then you can do the Android app. When you want to build an application, so how do you package it through Ripple? There's another little button over here that says Start Ripple Services, or you can have the model launched every time. They're the, the underlying services that are actually going to package your application and put it together. Once you turn those on, then you just need to fill out the information. Type the, the SDK path. Now this SDK path may differ depending on what application you have. For instance, I have both the WebWorks OS SDK and I also have the BlackBerry 10 SDK. So when I'm compiling BlackBerry 10 applications, I need to change this to point to the BlackBerry 10 directory. When I'm, com when I'm compiling uh, WebWorks, I need to move that to go to WebWorks. Then your project group, in my case, c colon backslash inet pub slash wwroot slash zenlogger. That's where all my assets are. The archive name, the archive name is just um, the archive name is just the name of the, the file that's going to come out the other side, right? It's going to be the bar file, your application file. For you Android developers, it's whatever you name your APK, right? Same thing. I call mine Zen Lottery, or in this case, it's Kitchen Sink. Um, and then the output folder, where do you want it to go? And that's all there is to it. Then you're going to, you're going to click the button that says Package. That will package it up, and it will create two directories and two files. One is for the simulator, one is for the device. And the reason why is because the simulator and the device run on different hardware. So we need to have slightly different commands underneath. The simulator runs on a, on a uh, x86 uh, machine. Um, the, the hardware, the phones, don't. So you'll have two different directories. But it'll get built for you automatically. Oh, here, device and simulator. Okay? And then, oh yeah, this is my friend Tim Lee. Tim Neal, who, who does a lot of our tools, this is his favorite slide for some reason. If you don't start, if you don't start the Ripple services, this is what you'll see. You'll see the old snap, which is okay. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> if you ever see Tim Neal, tell him you saw this slide. He'll be so happy. Um, okay, so we know how to build them. We know we've got the if we've got the assets. We know how to package them. We know how to emulate them. So what does an app look like? So. Let's create our first app. Shockingly, we're gonna create something called Hello World. Um, so what you would do is you would create a Hello World folder in your, in your web server directory. So for me, it's C colon backslash inetpub slash wwroot. So I would create a Hello World. Put that in the working directory of your, of your folder. Then you create an index.html file. This probably looks really scary, right? It's an HTML file. We've got a doc type at the top. You've got an HTML opening tag, your head, your title, your body. We've got a little div ID message that says, hello world. Voila. BlackBerry 10 application. 
almost. The other thing you have to build is what's called a config.xml file. Basically, this file is how WebWorks, the WebWorks SDK, knows what pieces to bring into your application. It also identifies your application. You notice I've got uh, the name Hello World, the content just pointed to the index because most Blackberry applications are written as, as uh, off of one file, starting with one file to have multiple screens. We'll talk about that in the um, Index, and then your author name, and that's it. Once we have that config.xml file, that will be able to tell us to be able to do the packager. So we configure Ripple to build the Hello World application using WebWorks BB10, and I think I actually have one here. Let's see if I've got a Hello World. Let's see, localhost, so oh, by Zen Modern, I'll work on this more tomorrow, let's see. Atlanta. Ooh, you know what? Yeah, okay. So this is our Hello World application with, ooh, stuff, don't look at that, that stuff coming up next. But basically that's all we did. Is we got the HTML file, we've got the config.sys file. If we look at my directory structure, I know, you never thought you'd hear me say that too. Hey, come here, look at my directory structure. So I've got in here a whopping three files. I've got the index.html file, I've got the config.xml file, which looks a little bit like this, and I've got a WebWorks JS file, which we're going to talk about in just a second. So that's all you need in order to build an application. Now, if I were to turn on a layer, so there's no translation that, that needs to come through, you also need to add the webworks.js file, although now it's webworks version number.js file to your project. It's basically what does that packaging of the blackberry.app, blackberry.event, etc. to get to talk there. Um, it gets downloaded with the BlackBerry 10 SDK. You'll find it in the framework slash client files, and you just copy it on over. You saw in mine that I already had it there. Oops, that's not what you want. This one. Right, so I already had it here. Uh, the most recent one, webworks jx So you bring that one in, and you're going to want to load that one too. That's what takes care of um, the interactions with webworks. So, you need to initialize the WebWorks framework. True story. You need to initialize the WebWorks framework. Here's something that, that kind of kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Um, when I was first developing my WebWorks app um, a couple weeks back, um, I ran in Ripple and everything worked great. It was fabulous. Then I got myself I had my hands on a Dev Alpha device and I said, "Cool." Put on the Dev Alpha device and it broke. What the? Oh yeah, it works fine. They made it work fine. Turns out, what I wasn't doing was I wasn't waiting for the WebWorks JS to finish loading. Apparently, on the hardware, in the emulator, it loads like that. So there's no problem when you go in and start making calls to those WebWorks APIs because it's already loaded. On the device, it takes a half a second or so. So what you need to do is when you get the WebWorks as, uh, WebWorks.js file, you load it up like you like you would any other JS file, but then you need to add this dashboard here. The window add event listener load function, you need to add a listener for the WebWorks red. Then, at the end, is the call to the function when you're red. Basically, you've got to let WebWorks spool up before you make calls to it. So it's pretty simple. You add that event listener, and when it's ready, all your functions happen within the FN ready. And of course, they can call out to other functions, but you need to make sure you wait for that event. Okay, um, so you saw because I uh, so drurly, <laughs> but you saw we had a little dialog box popped up. So that is a hardware call that we made, and it's really simple. What I did is I added to the config.xml file feature ID with blackberry.ui.dialog. <laughs> Remember, the config.xml file is the file that I use to say which parts of the WebWorks SDK do I need in my application. Because just like you all know on the web, you don't want to put in a bunch of extraneous JavaScript files in there if you're not going to use them, right? Slow those things down. So this is my way of saying, okay, here, hello world, there's my, there's my content source, there's my first page, there's my author name, and I'm going to be using the blackberry.ui. That's all I need to do. Then, I add this code. Notice this isn't my function ready. Remember the function ready was the one I called when WebWorks gave me back the WebWorks ready message. So here's what I do. Pretty simple. Um, I, I set a uh, variable in my buttons. 
I'm going for the really odd button, the yes and no. Um, and then I've got certain options. I've got a title, a size, I'm going to set up the medium size in the center. And then I make my call here, Blackberry WI Dialog Custom Ask Sync. Welcome to WebWorks, that's the text of it. Pass in the buttons. What's going to happen when the dialog exits? What function is going to be called when somebody clicks a button? And then the ops here are just what options come in. Now, when somebody clicks a button, we'll be able to know which button was clicked. So we can do it based on, uh, so we can take certain actions. So, I already showed this to you, but we'll show it again. Um, when I load this up, this is part of the function ready, it pops up that dialog box. And then I can click this dialog box and say yes or no. So with a couple lines of code, I'm able to do the dialog box. Now when I click that dialog box, it called the other, the other function at the end, passed in the index to tell me which button it clicked. So I can be able to grab which button. Oh, and there's the static picture. Okay, so we've got WebWorks that allows us to get access to some of the hardware pieces, cameras, um, IDs, integration with BBM, uh, the BlackBerry Messenger, um, um, dialog boxes, storage, all that kind of good stuff. But what you guys are here for and what the cool stuff is, how do we make it look like a BlackBerry 10 application? How do we get access to all the cool things that BlackBerry 10 can do? The three of which we saw, okay, one of which we saw in the video. But um, to give you a little taste of what BlackBerry 10 looks like, um, here's some of the stuff we've got built into BlackBerry 10 on the Cascade side, which is CC++, and the BBUI.js side, so web ones. So we have BlackBerry gridlets that allow you to lay out images in certain grids with titles, and yes, this is another Tim Neal side. Tim, Tim is actually building this Batmobile in his spare time. He hasn't been doing a lot of work on it in the last six months or so. He's been kind of busy. But uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. So we've got grid lists. We've got action bars. Action bars are the stuff down at the bottom, right? You can have multiple buttons in the action bars. You can have more in the action bars. You can have overflows in the action bars. We've got context menus. That's the peak stuff. So the context menu, you can have a peak where just icons come over. So these can be different icons, like it could be, uh, I don't know, a, a mail icon and a text icon and something else so you can take a peek to see what's happened there. And then if you pull it all the way over, you get the full icon. So you do those through the peak and the show. We also have, oh, oh wait, let me go back to that one for a second. This is another one of my favorite things. And this just seems, this just seems weird when you first look at it. Anybody notice how these things are formatted? Looks kind of odd, doesn't it? Because every other list you see like that, it's always up at the top, right? When you have menus like that. We did this on purpose. How long's your thumb? Right? If, I wanted, if I'm down here and I'm working on the phone, and this email work pops up at the top of my screen, what do I have to do? I gotta let go of my hand and get all the way to the top of the phone, right? So we put our stuff by default in an area that's still reachable from your fingers. So you don't have to take your hand off the phone. Just one of those little things we call moments of charm, where we think about how, you, how people are using these things to make it easy for them to be able to do things. That's an aside. Okay, we have sliders. Um, we use a slider to adjust values between a given range. Um, provides min max values. It's got this nice little blue halo, so you can see when you click on it, it's got this blue halo. We've got radio buttons, which uh, kind of fill and dissolve, which is kind of cool. I'm showing these things because um, no surprise, right? I mean, we've got all the things that you would expect to see, right? Tiny image lists that can be broken up with titles. We've got, we've got arrow lists so that you can click on an arrow list and move forward. We've got drop downs, image lists. Oh. An interesting thing about drop downs and, and inputs, and also buttons. I think we have buttons on the next slide. Um, buttons and uh, pill buttons are different, but regular buttons um, and sliders actually do this as well. You don't have to do anything special. If you do your HTML code for an input button or a slider button, what they call range, right, and you package it through the WebWorks, we'll automatically style it for you so it'll look like a BlackBerry 10 app. 
So you don't have to do anything. So if you're using some of these standards, like buttons and your HTML5 and ranges and uh, input lists and drop downs, and when you do it through the WebWorks BB10, it'll already look like a WebWorks BB10 application. Uh, screen menus. Um, these are odd. I, I don't know if you people knew this, because a lot of people don't, because of our, uh, our stealth playbook. Um, the interesting thing about a playbook is you always has got this large, this actually rather wide border all the way around it, right? More so than you see them. That's an active border. It means I can do things. When I touch on the bottom and slide up, it does something. When I touch on the top and slide down, it does something. On the playbook, if I touch left and right, I'll swap between applications. I don't have any applications running now. No, of course not. Um, oh yeah, I got one, right? So they're active borders. We do that for two reasons. One, it's we do it really for one reason. And that one reason is when you look at this application, please don't read my emails. <laughs> when you look at this application, there's no system bar, right? There's nothing here that is controlled by the operating system because we have the active border. We give every single pixel on this screen, and we will in BlackBerry 10, to the developer. We don't have a little bar at the top or a little bar at the bottom to control things. It's all there. Well, if I want to see the system bar, I just slide like that from my axis to the top, and now I can see the system bar. But everything is there for the developer because we realize in some of our, our marketing and research that the more immersive an application, the better it does. Right? An application that looks like it's built for the system and immerses the user does better for the user. <clears throat> so, another one of what we call moments of charm, cinematic experience. We give you access to everything. I told you that story to tell you this one. Screen menus. So when I slide down from the top, that's where my application menus come from. Those are available in the BDUI JS as well, so you can take advantage of that. Um, we also have them in 5, 6, and 7, so if you want to do web works on the earlier systems. Um, we also have some that are specific. We have the BBM bubbles. So if you're working in a BBM application that integrates with our messaging system, then uh, you can have it look like the messaging system. Uh, okay, so I, I just wanted to zip through the slides just to let you know that BBUIJS and Cascades, uh, you know, they're mature systems. You know, they're not just a couple of things here and there. We've built out all the things you would expect there. The goal of BBUIJS is to give that BlackBerry look and feel, the BlackBerry 10 look and feel, to HTML5 applications. We want to be able to have you reuse your code between what's up on the web, what's on the handheld, what's on the phone. It's in line with the BlackBerry UX guidelines, our user experience guidelines, um, and it does what's called, it also works with what's called screen management. And screen management is where we're going to get to next. Now, in order to use everything within BlackBerry UIGS, you have to add a few other things to your config.sys or config.xml file. <laughs> That's showing my age. How many of you know what a config.sys file is? Okay, good. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah. Um, config.xml file. Um, you need to add all this stuff. And again, you know, for those of you frankly writing, I'm going to give you a link that has all this information and more at the end, so you'll be able to download this stuff. But basically, you add a few of the system events, the apps, the dialogue, the menu, and the event, and that allows you to get access to all the stuff that's in the BBUIJS. Now, it's mandatory to do an initialization of the BBUIJS. You do that through bb.init. Now, then you put in your options. If you just pass in a blank, it'll take all the default options. But the options that you can have, you can do whether you're going to work with the back key, so you do six and seven, um, what colors, whether you want to use the dark color set or the light color set, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is one of the things that you're going to want to call in that ready event. So here's mine for uh, uh, the lottery. Is basically I've got, uh, I've got two variables that I do for the highlight and the accent colors. And then I've got my event listener here to make sure, <gasps> make sure web ready is there. And then I call a function. You guys know how to do that, right? You don't have to call a separate function. But. And that function basically emits the BBUIJS. So I call that after WebWorks is ready because BBUIJS uses stuff from WebWorks.js. So we want to make sure that it's ready to go. Okay? Now, the way BBUIJS is built 
is it's built around manipulating screens. And screens are just HTML fragments. Usually they're divs. They can be separate pages. They can be within the same page. They have separate IDs. And the BBUIJS manipulates them into the DOM for you. Does the transitions, etc. Brings them in where they need to be able to go. So each individual HTML fragment type will start with the BB dash or the data dash BB dash type screen. And that div is going to define a screen element for you. You then have a bunch of different transition effects you want to do if you want to do fade or slide left, up, right, down. Um, the opposite happens when you exit the screen because it works just like you would expect with push and pop. So you push the screen onto the stack, you pop the screen off of the stack. I think I have some code on that. Yeah. So here's, so here's what we might do with our previously really intensive Hello World application if we wanted to make it into a screen in a BB10 application. Notice at the top we've got the type BB10 screen. We've got the title, my screen, and the effect is slide left. So when this screen comes up on, it's going to slide left. Um, we've got a title. That's going to put the title up at the top, the little black bar. And then we've got the text. Notice that this is not a full HTML file. There's no HTML section. There's no header section. There's no doc type. It's just a fragment. BBUIJS manipulates these fragments as individual screens. Okay. So one app is a single page. And we have the same, the same things, push and pop. So I've got a function that runs off of my, in, in Zen Lottery, that runs off of the uh, action bar at the bottom. When you click that action bar, it calls a function, passes in which button was, was picked. And then basically, based on that, it goes through a big switch statement and pushes the screen on. The screen pops in, we're ready to go. When we're done, we pop the screen on. So it's all about these little segments of code that you define to be your screen, and the BBUIJS allows you to bring it back and forth. We also have two other events, and this is more for you advanced JS developers. Um, because sometimes you want to manipulate things before the screen is ready to go, and sometimes you want to manipulate things when the DOM is ready to go. So we've got these two things, on-screen ready and on-DOM ready events. Um, the on-screen ready is basically post-JavaScript load once it's passed through the screen element, and it's done synchronously. Whereas the DOM ready is after the full render, and it fires asynchronous. So this allows you basically to do setup work, right? So you've got the HTML5 code, you're going to ready to push it on the screen. You may want to do, a, do one of the on-screen readies to be able to manipulate, maybe grab some data out of a, a database or something and display that information. You're going to want to do that in that event. So we have those two events. Okay, so here's an example of the on-screen ready. Um, it's, it's done within the BB init. Um, in this case, just because it's done when I init, in this case when I init the, the um, and all this one does is write to the console log that it's, that it's ready. Um, here's also an example of the push screen. Ha, made you look over here, didn't I? Um, body on loan, BB push screen, menu.html, menu. That's just a little section of code. Let's see, do I have that up and running? Let's see. Oh, I don't. We'll just put that That's just one of those little sections, right? It's a little fragment. Well, so, uh, Let's see, where's the monitor? So we look at, uh, here's the draw page, right? So it's just a little segment of code. Oh, I do have a doc type. But it's just a little segment of code that's got a screen. And in my index.html, down here at the bottom, I've got BB push screen, draw.html, draw. That's the name that I give to that screen so that I can tell when that screen comes through what I need to be able to do. For instance, if you scroll up here a little bit, You'll see in my on DOM ready function that I go through and I check what screen I have. And depending on which screen comes through, I do certain things, right? If it's the draw screen come through, I set what the draw label height is. And so I just do a couple of setup things within that system. So I need to be able to know what the name of the screen is in order to do that. So I showed you that, but I'll show you this as well. Let's look at some code. I'm going to show you three things. The title bar, the slider, and the action bar. This is the lovely, the lovely Carol Merrill. Remember Carol Merrill? 
Yay! Um, <laughs> she used to be on the Price is Right, the Price is Right, or, or Let's Make a Deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was the one who was always showing the boats and things. Um, I'm going to show you the code for the title bar, the slider, and the action bar. So the title bar code, really simple stuff. Um, we just have a div that's got a data B type title, the div title, and draw numbers. Once we have, we see that, we see the, the data BB type title, that's going to be what's at the top of the bar. We're going to automatically size it to the right size and the right width based on whether you're flopping it back and forth or not. I also put in the other stuff at the top just to let you know that we're starting this inside a screen. If you don't put these BB types inside a screen div, they're not going to show up. Okay. Um, the slider in the middle, let's see, do I still got that running? Because we didn't really see a good slide. Let's see, where's, uh, uh, let's see. No, no, no. Oh, oh, Thank you. Okay, so the slider here, notice it when I click, click, we get the little halo effect. And as it slides, you can kind of see the halo. Things so click and slide. We get that nice little halo effect. The beauty of that is that's done for you. This is that code. Notice there's no data BB type in here. It's just your HTML5 range, right? So if I put this out at a uh, non BB10, so let's turn off Ripple, <coughs> stable Ripple. See, here's my slider over here on the left. See, it looks like a normal Google slider that Chrome puts together, right? So the nice thing is, with the WebWorks and uh, BlackBerry 10, a lot of the stuff that is, that is displayed for you, we automatically do it for you to make it into a BlackBerry 10 look. Then the magic will turn back on Ripple, and it's reformatted for us. Okay. Now, this, oh, you're probably going to have to squint. Um, this is the action bar at the bottom. At the top, we've got a, a data BB type action bar, and we've told it the type of style we want to provide, which means it's going to have a highlight. That's this little, no way, no way. That's this little gray line right here. If we didn't want to have a highlighting in there, it could just be a, a plain bar. We wouldn't have to have that in there. But I told it in there because I wanted to have the highlight. So we've got a big dip. Starts at the top, ends at the bottom. Then each of the buttons inside there is another div. In this case, it's data BB type action. And I've set it to a style to be tab. So each of those buttons is a separate div within there. You notice I've given it an image, BB image, and I've told it on this first one, I've set it selected, because that's the page we're on. And then I've got an on-click event. I told you about that on-click event, which is the load, um, load page, and I pass in the zero. So I pass in the index number, so that in that function, in that load page function, I know which page I'm on. Let's see if I've got that available. Uh, let's see, so that's going to be a core. It's not there. Let's see, there's load. There we go, load page. Okay, so here's the load page function. Let's see, very simple function. All the load page function does is it takes in the page ID, does a switch, right? If it's zero, I push the draw screen. If it's, if it's one, I push the favorite screen. If it's two, I push the add page screen, et cetera. So that's all there is to it, right? I go through, I grab that value, I push those screens. Then every time I push one of those buttons, I get a different screen. So over here, let's see. So every time I push, so we push favorites, calls that function, loads a different screen. Push the add favorites, loads a different screen. Okay, so where do you get it? Like I said, multiple times. BlackBerry UIJS is an open source product. Run by my pal Tim Neal, the guy in the Batmobile. It's out on GitHub. If you want to grab it, grab it. If you want to contribute to it, groove. That would be great. But it's out there. It's available. It's open source. 
There's also a bunch of examples out there that use the BBURTS to be able to get this, the, the stuff done. Documentation, basically all you need is out there. Now, this presentation that I built, I built out of four different presentations that go on to Blackberry Jam. So if you want to come to Blackberry Jam America, you get to see the longer, less um, caffeinated version. Um, but if, you, if you're not going to make it out there or you want to see more of what's going on here, this is where you want to go. HTTP www.blackberryjamworldtour.com slash presentations. Basically, there's, you'll find all the presentations from the Blackberry Jam in May. So it is a little dated as far as what features and functions are there, but a lot of the core is there in the presentation. So you can download those presentations as well as the C and C++ presentations are out there as well. So blackberryjamworldtour.com slash presentations. Also, don't forget about Blackberry Jam Americas. We have our marketing hat back on. Um, September 25th through 27th, blackberryjamconference.com is where you can get all that information. Um, I have a few free guest passes left. Um, basically, they're, they're comp codes, so when you go register, you type it in and they won't charge you for the registration. So if you want to go to San Jose, um, I'm going to be there. You can hang out with me. Um, as well as most of my evangelist friends. Uh, in San Jose, let me know. I'll be more than happy to give you uh, give you a pass so you can get in free. Um, I can't fly you there and put you up in hotel. But we can at least get you in. And if you also have any questions for me, here's all my information again. I am still Tom Anderson. I'm still a Blackberry developer evangelist. My email and my Twitter account. Although I don't tweet much. Well, I tweeted today. <laughs>